leadership team, and I uh, really appreciate you guys. And uh, it's been a great year. Who's had a good year? Yeah. It's been a good year. So it's sort of starting to kind of come to a close as we, we wind up. But um, hey, we started a few weeks ago a series called Come to Worship. Everyone say, Come to Worship. And there is up sc- on screen uh, for you. My, the title of my message uh, comes straight from the Christmas story. And it's in um, Matthew chapter 2. And I'll read it for you. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, or as we know them, the wise men, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. And how many of you know wise men still worship Jesus today? I mean, come on. And these guys, actually, these wise guys, they actually traveled, we discovered last week. They traveled over 1,500 kilometers to find baby Jesus in hopes that they would find the Messiah, the one born king. And uh, that's pretty much the, the, the full length of New Zealand. And, and, uh, and so that, the wise men that made that trip, I just want to say well done for making it to church this morning. Well done for getting out of bed and making it however long uh, your trip was. Well done for making it to church this morning. Give yourselves a pat on the back uh, for that. And in this series, we've been looking at a few different postures of coming before God, of what we would call worship. And we've looked at raising hands. Even in times of trial, when sometimes things get tough and we raise hands to God, help comes to us. Last week we looked at opening our gifts, like the wise men that opened gifts uh, to Christ uh, when they came before Him. And so we looked at that last week. And uh, this week I want to look at uh, worshipping Him in the act of bowing our knee. Bowing our knee in an act of worship and surrender to our Creator God. And so I want to continue the story if we jump into verse 10 of Matthew chapter 2 still. And it reads, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Everyone say overjoyed. Overjoyed. Some of you need to inform your faces you say that. Say overjoyed. Overjoyed. And so now you're looking happier. We looked at that last week. It actually means they were overjoyed. They were happy to be happy about being happy. That They were happy that Christ was there. They found him. They were overjoyed. They traveled this long and treacherous journey uh, on camel nonetheless, the full length of New Zealand equivalent. And when they arrived, they were overjoyed. They were overjoyed to worship this one, this Christ that they had found. On coming, verse 11, to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down, they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. They were overjoyed and they what? How did they worship him? They bowed down. Now, usually we have this picture in our heads, don't we, of little sweet baby Jesus in the crib and here comes the, the wise men and, and bowing down before Jesus in the, in the manger, right? That's the picture we normally kind of have at Christmas time. But in reality, we know that by this time, Jesus was around two years of age. All right, so uh, he was a toddler. Has any of this kind of changes the whole dynamics of the story for me now when I kind of visualize this? Because has anyone ever had a toddler in the house? Has anyone got a toddler in the house at the moment? Was it a grandchild or your own child? Toddlers are crazy, am I right? Toddlers, are, just when you think you got on top of the baby thing, got into the routine, they become toddlers, right? And toddlers are crazy. Toddlers make you feel like a terrible, terrible parent. As they melt down in the middle of the mall, or the middle of countdown, they, they kind of just spit the dummy and it's like, Aah. and we all stand around judging that parent, you know, like, get control of your child, you know. And toddlers, are too, and toddlers are disgusting as well, aren't they? They, they? they stick things up their nose, you know, you give them food and they, they don't put it in their mouth, they stick it up their nose or in their ears or wherever they can sort of find to put it or fly it across the room, they, they, they terrorise us. And another thing I, I know from experience, the toddlers, they wreck stuff. Am I right? The toddlers are really good at just, just wrecking stuff. I have a whole graveyard box of old cell phones that are now the kids' toys or, you know, were the kids' toys because... You know, they wouldn't play with their toys when we're out, and so you'd end up giving them your cell phone, and then boom, it's on the floor, it's all over. 
And so they were cell phones. In fact, um, I was going to put my little uh, my boy in it when he was a toddler. He managed to get hold of a black vivid one time and drew all over our nice cream couch, <laughs> expressing his artistic ability uh, to the praise of his sister. Who, as we were telling Dan off for doing such a terrible thing to our couch, uh, his, his big sister said, "But, but uh, what did you say?" He said, "But, but." It, 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 he did a good job, Mummy and Daddy. It looks really good, Dan, because we're, we're teaching you to encourage your little brother. But anyway, the toddlers, they terrorize us, they tear our hair out. It's why I'm so grey right now, okay? And all that to say, these wise men came and they weren't bowing before little baby Jesus in a manger. They were bowing before a crazy toddler. And it kind of changes the dynamics of the story, at least in my head. And, and, and I say, that, you know, that, that, that's what the wise men did. But this morning, I want to talk about bowing our knee to Almighty God in the presence of Almighty God, who is the one who sent His Son to us and for us. Now, when it comes to bowing the knee, culturally it's kind of not something we do a whole lot, am I right? You know, if you're bowing the knee, I was sort of thinking about it this week, you only really bow the knee if you're proposing, which I did to my wife on Power Nui. We, Propose, get down on one knee. It's what we do, right, blokes? We, you know, and, and the only other time is that if you get ignited by the Queen or something, you get down on a knee. You know, uh, other than that, I'm not sure how often we kind of get down. It's not really part of our our culture, um, so to speak, kneeling uh, for any particular reason. But if we open up the scriptures, there's actually time and time again, as men and women came into the presence of God, they couldn't help but bend the knee bow before God and His awesome presence in reverence and in humility for who God is, just like the wise men did before Jesus. And we're going to look at that. In fact, I want to turn to Psalm 95. And in Psalm 95, I just want to read two verses for you this morning. It reads like this. It says, Come, let us bow down to worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. And what's interesting to me is that word in there. You can see it up on the screen, the word worship. It actually appears 170 times throughout the Scriptures. And if you directly translate it, it literally that word literally means to bow down. Whenever it says to worship, it means to bow down in the presence of God. Now, I think one of the reasons why culturally maybe we don't kneel or bow so much is that we don't really fully comprehend just the awesomeness, the wonder, and the holiness of this God that we serve. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. That we just sometimes just don't comprehend how incredible He is. And the amazing thing to me is that you know, throughout the scriptures, when people encountered the presence of God, that God never, even once, throughout the whole page of the Bible, it's a big book, never once does God ever ask anyone to bow to Him. He never does. He never asks anyone, hey, you bow to me, you subjects, you creation of mine. He just doesn't do it. He never asks. And yet, time and time again, when people come into His presence, they find themselves on their face, bowing before God because it's like just a natural, rational response to His wonder, to His goodness, to His holiness. And I know for me, there's been times when I've been so, just personally, so overwhelmed just by the nearness of God, the awesomeness of God. Sometimes it's in a time like we were having before, a time of worship. Sometimes it's just by myself. Sometimes it's been just kind of out in nature in the bush. I've just been spending time. I've just felt God come so near. I've felt so overwhelmed. I know that God isn't just some, some you know, dude up in the sky somewhere. I know He came close. And, and in those moments, I know I have felt to just bend the knee and just kind of humble myself before Him as I get just this incredible revelation of how amazing and how big and how awesome and how wonderful our God is. Has anyone else been in that position before? Just about that overwhelmed. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And this morning, I want to inspire you to come to worship by bowing down, bowing before this awesome God. And what better time, eh, in the hustle and bustle of the season just to press pause 
and bow before the one who the season is meant to be all about, right? To bow before him. And I want to invite you to do that this morning. And I want to give you a few reasons. I want to give you three quick reasons this morning why you might want to bow before God this morning. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. The first one is, is, is simply this is bowing in thanks. Is anyone thankful for something that's happened this year? Thanks for the year that was 2019. As you think back over this year, is there something that you are thankful for that you can bow before God and say, God, thank you? Because we know it's all by His grace. We know his, it's His goodness um, in our lives. In fact, the Bible says all good and perfect gifts comes down from our Father of lights. And there's a there's a story in the Gospels that's very popular in Sunday school, if you're a Sunday school kid like me. And it was about Jesus healing the ten lepers. You know that one? Anyone know that one? Jesus healing the ten lepers. And, and, uh, and he, of course, the lepers, they were kind of outcasted because no one wanted to catch what they had, right? And so they had to live all by themselves just with their leprosy and kind of really just live miserable lives until they died. And uh, Jesus came to them, and, and uh, instead of disassociating and separating, Jesus came near. Emmanuel came near, and he touched him and, and brought healing. In fact, he said, go to the, the priest, the one that can re, give you re-entry into the community, and show him. And, and it says, as they went, they were miraculously healed. One of many miracles that Jesus did. And we pick it up in verse 15. It says that, it says that one of them, remember that one? The one. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came running back, praising God in a loud voice. Who likes loud? I like loud. <laughs> loud is good. In a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. What did he do? He thanked him. Thank you, Jesus. I am healed. I'm no longer an outcast. I've been completely healed. He fell at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, we're not all ten cleansed. Where, where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise, go, your faith has made you well. One came back praising God, kneeling before Jesus and thanking him. Is there something this year, a blessing that you have received this year? Maybe a holiday. Maybe, maybe you've actually had a tough year. Maybe you've, you've gone through a health crisis or a financial crisis, but God has brought you through and God has been faithful. And you can bow and thanks and say, God, thank you. It was tough, but you never left my side. Thank you that you are with me. Thank you that you are a good father. Can we bow before God and say thanks to him for the year that was? Second reason we can bow before God, this morning is, is bow in desperation. Is there something you feel desperate about right now that you're not sure what you're going to do? There's a story again from the, the Gospels in Matthew 15 about a Canaanite woman. It says a Canaanite woman from the vicinity uh, came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and is suffering terribly. How many of you are parents? And you know the anguish if you ever see your kids, your children, suffering. And this woman's child was suffering, it says, terribly. And Jesus, it says, did not answer a word because culturally it was incorrect for her to speak to her. So his disciples came to an urge and sent her away. She keeps crying out after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And the woman came. Watch what happened. The woman came and knelt before him. The woman came and she knelt before him. Lord, she says, help me. Lord, help me. What did she do? She bent the knee. She bowed before God. And what? In desperation. Jesus, I need you to come through. I need you to come through. And in verse 28, Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment, the Canaanite woman was desperate for the suffering of her daughter. And she came and she knelt before Jesus in desperation. And Jesus praised her for her great faith. How many of you sometimes, you know, when we don't have all those religious prayers or those nice, neat, packaged prayers, we're just desperate. There's just a heart cry, God, 
My child's sick. God, I'm going through this. God, there's this thing happening at work and it's driving me nuts. I don't know what I'm going to do. God, I need your help. Maybe this morning you find yourself in a desperate situation. Or maybe one of your family members in in a desperate situation. I want to invite you to bow before God as you come before Jesus. He is the one who is able. Amen. He is the way maker. David Peters spoke incredibly a few weeks ago about how God is our way maker. That as we come to him, it's not just prayer. It's leaning on the, uh, on the arms and the power and the strength of almighty God. And he is able to step into our situation. When we're desperate and don't know what to do, when we bow before him, he is able to step in on the scene. Can someone say amen to that? Yeah. We have a good God. And I can give testament. In fact, even uh, this week, we were in a desperate situation. Just a couple of nights ago, my wife was whisked off to, to hospital with chest pains. That was a desperate situation for anybody. And that, we, we thought, what's going on here? And she looked pale and, and, and worried. Thank goodness the kids were asleep. But she whisked off to hospital and, and uh, all the tests sort of happened. And praise God, it's just a, it wasn't the heart. It was a muscular thing. We are like, thank you, Jesus. We breathed a sigh of relief. But, you know, I think, what if it was the heart? We, none of us know how long we've got, do we? I mean, just, you know, ask those, those poor folks on White Island. No, they were enjoying a great holiday. Next thing, it's, it's all over. Yeah. Life is fragile. We don't know how long we've got. Sometimes we, we think we're strong. We've got it all together. But it only takes one little event, one little thing that could happen that could turn everything. And you know what? In those desperate moments, we have a God who sees. We have a God who loves us as we bow to Him. If you're in a desperate situation, I want to invite you this morning to bow the knee to Jesus and let Him help you. And finally this morning, we can bow in surrender. Everyone say surrender. Surrender. I've got a confession to make. When I was a kid, I loved WWF wrestling. Is there anyone? I'm talking the ultimate warrior. Come on, the Bushwhackers. Come on. Come on. Hulk Hogan, anybody? I had a figurine. Yes, come on, Lyra. Hulk Hogan. I had a figurine of, of Hulk Hogan. And uh, I wrote that Andre the Giant. Come on, he was the one of the best, wasn't he? Come on, Andre the Giant. I'm talking not this modern stuff that they have. I'm talking about the classic stuff, you know. And uh, me and my mates used to get the mattresses out and the cushions and, you know, play WWE. I, I love WWF and just quietly... When it still comes on every now and again, I might just watch a little bit of it. Just, you know, some, some boy in me that likes to uh, still enjoy a bit of WWE. But there's something happening as they are doing this very real wrestling. Um, <laughs> off the ropes, boom, the clothesline, there it goes. Um, something that happens that, that if somebody gets caught in a, in a really tough hole, or if they just, they just can't go on, they've just been really beat up and someone's using a chair on them. And there's something that they, that they always do, they would tap out. You must say tap out. Tap out. Tap out. If they just couldn't tap, if they're just stuck in this hole and there's no way, they know they've lost the fight, they would just tap out. And by tapping out, they're saying, I can't take it anymore. I surrender, I, I give up, I, I can't go any further. And how many of you know that sometimes life can sort of have a way of bending our knee for us? Yep. That sometimes life can kind of get us in a bit of a, a hold, a bit of a bind, where sometimes, you know, when we've kind of been going and, and trying to make life happen, but sometimes it can kind of get beyond us. Yep. And maybe you're feeling like that this morning, life is getting a bit stressful, a little bit beyond us. And we can, the good news is we have a Father who does love us and He wants to help us, that He is waiting to step in and help us. But sometimes He's just waiting for us to tap out and say, God, I surrender. I can't do this on my own. And maybe for years you've been doing life on your own. Maybe you've come along and, uh, you know, someone's invited you. You, you know, someone in your family says, hey, come to church. There's that Christmas service, right? But you're not generally a church goer, or maybe you don't call yourself a Christian. And, and you're sort of doing life. And we've got a pretty good here in New Zealand. We've got a great welfare that looks after us and things. But even with all the, the blessings that we have in this great country, we can still find ourselves struggling with, with anxiety and depression and stress and worry. And, and these things can really, and we, we know from the statistics that, that, it's, that we're paying a huge price trying to make life happen on our own. And I've got good news for you this morning. We do have a father who is waiting for you. And maybe what better time than Christmas to bow and surrender to him to say, God, you know what? 
I'm tired of trying to make it happen on my own. I'm tired of just trying to kind of get through life on my own and make it happen. Sometimes I'm doing all right, but, but I know sometimes deep down that, that I'm really not okay. And the good news is God sees it all. And if we just simply tap out and say, God, I surrender. God, will you... I want to know your plan for my life. God, I want to, I'm sick of my plan. I'm over my plan. My plan's not working out maybe so well in some areas. And so, God, I want your plan for my life. In fact, that's why God sent Jesus. He sent him on a rescue mission. He saw that humanity was going off in our own direction, causing all kinds of heartache and pain and sorrow. And we still see it in the world today, don't we? And so he sent Jesus born to die for us so we could be forgiven, be rejoined with God and know Him again and discover His purpose, His plan for our lives. Wouldn't you want to know what that is? Wouldn't you want to know His plan? All we have to do is, God, show me. God, I surrender. I bow and surrender to Your plan, Your will for my life. In fact, Jesus Himself, He um, he demonstrated this. He, he realized the power of, there is in surrender in his most desperate hour, the night before he went to the cross, knowing that he was about to endure one of the most torturous ways ever invented to die on a cross. And he was overwhelmed with what was about to take place. And so he went to his father, he prayed, and I'll read from Luke 22 and verse 41, it says that he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond his disciples and he knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Yet not my will, but yours be done. What did he do? In this desperate moment, he got on his knees. He knelt before God. He bowed the head before God. And he said, Father, not my will. Not my, but I can't, I haven't got what it takes. But God, your will be done. It was a prayer of complete surrender. He was tapping out saying, God, will you take over? God, I need you in the situation to be able to go through with what you've asked me to go through. This is a great strength. Bowing in surrender. Kneeling gives us strength to stand. And in fact, today we're talking about kneeling and thanks and so maybe in desperation and, and surrender to God. But I want to let you into a little secret that the reality is, is that one day all of us are going to kneel before God. Every single one of us, every person from every culture all over the planet, all of us are going to kneel before God, whether it's sooner or whether it's later, we're all going to kneel before Him. In fact, I want to read from the Scriptures for you in Philippians. I'll put it up on screen. In Philippians chapter 2, it says, talking about Jesus being found in appearance as a man, the God-man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. What does it say? Every knee will bow. Remember, God never asks any one of us to bow. He is not a mean or harsh taskmaster, but it's a natural response when we come before the presence of God, and one day every single one of us will come before our Maker, it says that it will be the most natural, the most rational response to bow the knee before God. Whether we choose today or later on, one day, all of us will bow the knee before God and worship Him because He's that good. So I want to ask you this morning, maybe today you just need to acknowledge God's blessings in your life. Something that He has helped you through. And today, you just need to simply bow in thanks and say, God, thank you for getting me through that. Thank you for blessing me in this way. Maybe you, you had a child. Maybe you had a grandchild. Thank you for blessing me with this new family member. Thank you for this life. Thank you for sustaining me through something. Maybe this morning, you, you're really going through something and you need to bow in desperation. Say, Jesus, I need your help. He's here for you. 
The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for the Canaanite woman and her daughter, he can step into your situation too. Maybe you just need to simply bow before him in desperation and ask humbly for his help. Or maybe this morning you know deep down in your heart you, you're just simply not in God's will. You're not, you're not living out his plan for your life. And this morning I want to invite you to step into that plan to simply bowing in surrender. Say, God, I, I, I'm still figuring this all out. I don't have all the answers, but you know what, God? I don't want to do this life by myself. I want to know why is it that I was created, what I'm on planet Earth for. God, I want to get to know you, and I want your plan for my life. And that happens when we simply come to Him and surrender. We bow and surrender. Say, God, I give you the reins of my life. God, will you take the steering wheel of my life and show me the path and the plan that you have. We get to know His will for us as we get to know Him. And we can get to know Him because Jesus came. Because Jesus came. Why don't you just close your eyes and you know, probably push for space to be bowing the knee if we're all bowing everywhere, but we can bow our heads this morning. Why don't you just bow your head this morning, church? Why don't you just go one-on-one -on -one with God right now? Maybe, maybe you just need to simply, like I said, bow and, and give thanks to Him. Maybe there's a cry in your heart where you say, God, you know what? This is still hanging around. This Maybe it's a personal struggle that's been hanging around. It's still there this year, God. I don't want to enter next year with this thing going on in my family, in my, my own person. I want to be free from this. I need your help. I'm desperate. You need to just bow and, and desperate and just let up a, a desperate cry for help in your heart to God. And this last category, this is really important. This, this morning you're here. And you don't know if you could call yourself a Christian, that, that if you came before God tonight, if you were like those on White Island, and suddenly, boom, you're, you're there before your maker, that, that you'd be right with God. And I want to invite you to say yes, to bow and surrender to His plan and His purpose for your life. To say, hey, God, you know, if you're real, I, I want to know you, and I want to invite you into my world. I want to invite you into my life, into my heart. And I want to know your plan for my life. I tell you what, I did that at the age of 15 and I've never looked back. God has taken me places I never dreamed that I'd go. My goodness, He had plans and purpose for, for purposes for me that I never would have dreamed of myself. He is a good God. He's a faithful God. You're not alone in this world. You were born for a purpose. God loves you. It's why He sent His Son as a gift that you might have life and life to the full. And all it takes is a simple act of surrender. In fact, what I want to do is, is I want to ask you this morning, is there anyone here this morning who's never, never invited God into your heart? You've never given your life to Christ, but you're just thinking this morning, you know what? This is a great morning at Christmas time to turn over a new leaf, to bow and surrender and say, you know what, God, I'll, I'm going to sign up for your plan for my life. I want to ask you to come into my heart. If that's you this morning, you want to pray that prayer with everyone Head bow and eyes closed. Just raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me, right? I'm in that category. I want to do that. I want to surrender my life to Christ. I want to tap out and say, God, I need you. Is there anyone here this morning that you want to give your life to Jesus? You've never done that before. Or maybe you've done it a long time ago, but you want to come back this morning. Just raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me. Right, just raise your hand. Well, everyone's got their eyes closed and head bow. Just... Raise your hand and say, yeah, Ryan, that's me, just to indicate, because I want to pray for you. Do you pray for everyone? Is there anyone in that category? Any hands? Just put up nice and bold so I can see you. Anyone coming back to Christ? We just want to say, hey, it's Christmas time. I want to recommit my life to Jesus and to His purpose, His plan for my life. You can raise your hand up now as well. Just raise your hand and say, that's what I want to do this morning. All right, no one's raising their hands. Maybe you're a bit nervous. But hey, church, why don't we just all pray this prayer? I want to invite us all to pray this prayer. And maybe if you were too nervous to raise your hand, I would encourage you that God sees your heart. And if you pray this prayer after me and just pray this simply to God from your heart, that God's going to do a work in your life. Let's all pray out loud together. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. 
I come to you right now. And I thank you that you came. And you died for me. Will you forgive me of all my wrongs? Will you come and make my heart clean? I'm inviting you into my life. I want your plan for my life. I say yes to you, Jesus. I give my life over to you. Help me to know you more and to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we run look up this way? If that prayer meant something for you, I'd love to shake your hand. May I pray for you, give you a Bible at the end of the service.